I think it's a really important question. Who's making that hire? Is that your hire, Howie? Or did Jeff Flory get involved in that? Um, because it is as big a position as it is, you pointed out that uh, Catherine Race did more than just personnel. She had a uh, bigger role within the organization. I I'd like to know, is does Howie get carte blanche to hire whoever he wants, or does he have to run it by Jeff? Does Jeff sit in, sit in on that interview process? How does that go for the Eagles to be able to pick um, the person who replaces Catherine Race? Got your Mac and guys, McDonald and McMullen here on Birds 365. Thank Chris Franklin for hopping on board. Always a good sport. He, he laughs at my non-funny jokes. So that's <laughs> why I like having Chris Franklin on. Uh, not funny at all. Serious. Serious spot coming up here on Birds 365. Oh, excuse me, on the Jacob Media YouTube channel today. Joining uh, Rob Ellis and Barrett Brooks and D. Gunn, Howie Roseman going to make his first appearance here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel. Um, you and I kind of kicked this around in hour number one uh, about uh, the replacement for Catherine Raich within the Eagle organization. I said it's a Jeff Lurie decision. You said, no, you think it's much more Howie Roseman decision because I was going to be working hand-in-hand uh, -hand with this person that much more. Uh, yes, Chris, the question about the uh, under uh, truth serum what question would you ask how we, believe it or not, I think it's a really important question. Who's making that hire? Is that your hire, Howie? Or does Jeff Flory get involved in that? Um, because it is as big a position as it is, you pointed out that uh, Catherine Race did more than just personnel. She had a uh, bigger role within the organization. I'd like to know is does Howie get carte blanche to hire whoever he wants, or does he have to run it by Jeff? Does Jeff sit in, sit in on that interview process? How does that go for the Eagles to be able to pick um, the person who replaces Catherine Reich? Um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't use that in my true serum question because I I'm really confident that it's Howie's. Uh, I have, Jeffrey trusts Howie, man. And this is Eagles fans hate this. He trusts him more than anybody else in his life. I think he might trust him more than Julian, uh, uh Julian Laurie. Uh, probably not, but you but get didn't my he point. at one point trust uh, the ex Joe Banner, yes, Joe Banner as much as yeah. he does Howie? Well, Roseman, they were so. childhood, they were childhood friends, so right. Anything any, could happen here, anything could change, you know. The joke in the NFL is everybody has a shelf life, but, um, and yeah, you're right. I mean, Joe Banner was uh, extremely close to um, Jeffrey Lurie. So I'm not saying it can't change down the road, but it hasn't changed yet. And, you know, maybe if he makes it terrible higher, it, it, it'll change. Um, I, I look at Jeffrey Lurie and he, I think he looks at, you know, the Chip Kelly era as the worst mistake in his uh, stewardship of the Eagles and not the hire, but uh, uh, giving him uh, power over Howie Roseman. And it was a convoluted explanation. I had to see what I had in Chip, blah, blah, which makes no sense. But um, I think, <laughs> I think that that scarred him a little bit and, He's got tremendous trust in, in Howie Roseman. And unless it, again, unless it's a, a, a total off the wall of hire um, with some controversial, and I can't even come up with a name, um, I don't think he would even bat an eye if, if Howie said, I'm going to hire so and so. It's so funny, uh, the whole Howie Roseman situation, the way that it played out. I swore I would never say this, but I have to say it. I probably would have done, if I were Howie Roseman, I probably would have pulled a Sam Hankey. That when they pulled the power out right, from under Write me, the manifesto? I would have gotten out my pen and my paper, and yeah. I would have logged my manifesto, and I would have stuck it under Jeff Lurie's door, and I would have yeah. been, see you well, later, bye. How he stuck it out. He took his time. He went to the other side of the building. 
He did the uh, the tour around all other sports franchises to yeah. learn what it was like to be a general manager, the decision making process, and everything else. He truly did double down on what he had to do to get better at his job, rather than get ticked off. I, I, although you know, I'm not the biggest Sam Hinkie fan ever. I actually think he did an injustice to this town and this organization, but. I think I would have played it same as Sam. Wait a minute. You told me I could do this, and now you're gonna you're not gonna fire me, but you're gonna ask me to sit idly by while someone else does my job? No, get the hell out of I'm done. I'm out of here. Well, he he and, and that's why course. that's why Howie is savvy and Sam is not. Um you, and, you'll know Jody McDonald is not, because I'm telling yeah. you, I would have done the same thing Inky did. You you'll notice Sam has never gotten another job. Uh Number one for all those Sam Hankey fans, you can't get him. He's not employable. Um, whereas Howie Roseman took his time and did the things necessary. And by the way, I just wrote about this a couple weeks ago at Philly Boys. That whole time period, Howie never had. Not, he didn't go into that with the plan that he was going to be the general manager of the Eagles again. Um, but he took advantage of his relationship with Jeffrey Lord to get this huge travel budget and go talk to Brian Cashman and RC uh, Buford and Manchester city even went overseas. Uh, whoever runs that organization, I forget. Um, uh, and he did all this with the intent on being a general manager somewhere else. Um, and, and, and if you want to be the GM somewhere else, Jody, in any sport, don't write a manifesto about your previous organizations. You're not going to get hired, period. End of sentence. Now, I think that guy would have had trouble getting hired anyway. Right. Because I, that, that was going to be my question to you, John. Did the manifesto handle well, I, I think that played a lot into it. I, the I last think thing. Some into it. I think the fact that the process was an abject failure is a bigger reason why Sam Enke hasn't gotten another general manager job in uh, anywhere in the NBA, more so than the fact that he took uh, 18 page. How long was it again? Yeah, to just uh, was, explain was, to the world his line of well, thinking. Well, here's why, here's why I disagree with you, Jody, because a lot of people still think we'll tell you it succeeded. A lot of people will still they, say. They, they just be crazy in my estimation. I Any, agree with Anyone you. who says that is just got the sixer colored blinders on that uh, don't but have you, any, any any peripheral vision whatsoever. But you, but you do know those people exist, right? They, I still get them all the time. And they say, well, if they just let Sam finish it, uh, the Sixers would be draped in jewelry and all that. And and they um, take their vacations in Roswell, New, uh, yeah. New Mexico. So, <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm supposed to pay attention to them. Sorry. But uh, they do happening. exist, is all I'm trying to say. And if... See, here's the problem with all the hanky to it. We're we're off on a tangent. I know we got to get back to the Eagles, but um, it, what they don't understand is they should really be, you know, praising Josh Harris because if you want to praise somebody, because no other owner would give some knucklehead carte blanche to lose forever. So if you want to uh, put someone one up as your deity it should be josh harris so no other owner is going to give this guy the rope that the sixers gave him and they wanted more sam hickey still how dare you not give me more rope and he so that's why i think the manifesto was even worse for him because other owners are very cognizant of their ex-employees because everybody right you're hired to be fired in these jobs everybody's getting fired uh, they're all running space except Bill Belichick. Um, it, and, you know, if, if you burn the bridge with an owner, oh, believe me, the other owners see that. And especially an owner who gave you more rope than anybody else in the history of the world. So I, yeah. that's why I think the manifesto was a bigger. Right. Thing. Yeah, we'll disagree. I think the main reason is. Josh Harris did give him as much rope as he did. They accomplished nothing. The commissioner in in official league meetings had to call the Sixers and Josh Harris, Harris on the carpet for going. 
You know all your your partners here are not happy with you. You come to town, they sell 3,000 less tickets per game because no one wants to see that dreck you're putting out there on the floor. You're costing everybody money. That's the results of the process, not the results of a manifesto. And I think any other owner doesn't want to be in that room and have the commissioner point and them go, you know, these all these other 29 guys are all ticked off at you. You know, you're costing everybody money. That's the reason. The bigger reason. The manifesto well, money, there money now. always, I, I will agree, money is always the, the end game. But I do find it incredibly ironic that somebody wrote a manifesto about essentially the guy who gave you all this. And you're arguing, you should give me more, even though the commissioner of your league is saying, all right, you have to stop this. You have to stop this. And he still is so entitled. He said, you promised. You promised. What GM in any sport goes, you promised. I mean, come on. That's essentially what he said. Uh, uh, you don't, And, uh, of course, the, 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 the best part is the hubris of you don't understand what I'm trying to do, which is basically what he's telling. No, we always understood it, you clown show. Uh you didn't understand that you don't live. What What's the term I always use, Jody? In a vacuum. Right. You don't live in a vacuum. Uh, those other teams that you just mentioned exist, Jody. Those other teams that are getting 5,000 less fans because your crappy product is coming. They exist. You don't get to play in a little vacuum by yourself in your, your science experiments. That's what the process people never got. Understood. All right. Back to Howie Roseman, who will be here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel later today with 12, Rob 15, Ellis. 1215. 1215, right? Uh, with D Gun and, and uh, Barrett Brooks. Um, we don't want to tell those guys what to, to ask. And uh, I guarantee you they do a great job of uh, uh, getting some information out of Howie today. Um, player related, front office related, because Eagles do still have some, even though they've done some hiring to replace uh, defections to other organizations, they still have some hires to do. Um, you know, they're going to ask about the quarterback, which, oh, by the way, I'll go out on a limb here and predict that Howie Roseman will be 100% behind Jalen Hurts since he has said that every single time yeah, since the season ended. You, yes. This past uh, offseason. Um, do you think he'll he'll give you any give us any details today about how he maneuvered in the first round? He was great before the draft, saying that he puts all these pieces in place for the first round at a time. You can do that. You don't have to just lock something and get something done. Even though they made the trade with New Orleans as far out as they did, you think he'll give you any behind the, the scenes details on uh, the conversations he had and the maneuvers he had to make to get AJ Brown? Um, he's been pretty above board with that, uh, already, you know, I think it was, um, you know, the negotiation of the contract, I think was the bigger hurdle than the, uh, Oh, that's, that's my number one question. Forget the Sam Hankey stuff. Did you negotiate the contract with AJ Brown or did you negotiate through the Titans because, you're not really supposed to negotiate with a player who's under contract to another team, right, John? Because uh, they, yeah. they didn't slap it together <laughs> in the 15 minutes after the deal was officially announced. Oh, and the Eagles and uh, A.J. Brown have negotiated a contract extension. We know it had to be done ahead of time. Who was the one actually doing the negotiating? Yeah, I, I think it was um, A.J.'s agent. Uh, and once you get permission, you know, the Titans – and it essentially gave him permission. So then you're fine. He did say was, you know, working on it um, before the draft, but it was not done while they were on the clock. So um, I guess they worked out the framework um, and, you know, where they were going to go. And at that point, it's got to be accepted. And he said, he did say one of the, one of the, one of the things people don't think about is, you know, you're trading the pick The you know, the other team's got to have time to be on the clock to get what they want to get done. Um, so that factors into it as well. So there was a lot of balls in the air and even from the Jordan Davis uh, uh, pick and trade up, which I predicted, um, 
and and I was questioning why they gave up so many other picks um, instead of just the 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 one hundred first pick, um, which would have been a little pricey if you look at the trade chart. But if you want a player, you got to pay a little bit of a premium, and they just went with the with the more volume of picks, and that surprised me when they made the Davis trade. And but then it didn't because they needed that 101st pick for to get AJ Brown. So he had a lot of balls in the air. Maybe uh, those guys will ask him about that. That's kind of interesting. How do you how do you how do you work one deal out? Do you know the other deals coming? Because um, that's that's kind of complicated in 10 minute windows. And I'm sure he'll uh, reiterate again that they actually did consider taking the Kobe Dean in the second round and were oh, joy. He's on the board. They had two players on the board, Jody. Cam Jergens and the Kobe Dean. Got them both. That's uh, that, that that's a good for as far as I'm concerned, good scouting that put a good board together. And oh, by the way, little luck involved. If he dropped all the way down to you, and they had already given up, as you mentioned, those other later round picks to be able to get the other deal done. So they couldn't even, oh, he's still there. He's still, let's jump ahead three spots in the third round to lock him in. They didn't have the picks to do it anymore because of the other deals that were made. They had to just cross their fingers and damn if N'Kobe Dean uh, didn't fall down to them. All right. Uh, we got uh, Tommy Lola is going to join us coming up in just a couple editor and publisher of eaglesblitz.com. Uh, there was one announcement earlier today, even before we started the show, John, um, that they've uh, leaked out another game and the National Football League schedule. It's not supposed to come out till Thursday, yeah. but Fox today announced, no, not Tom Brady going to take over next year or the year after or the year after or the year after whenever Tom Brady decides to retire. Um, no, that uh, week 10 is going to be the Cowboys versus the Packers. I think it's in Dallas, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, key game between two divisional winners last year. Dallas Green Bay just sounds like yeah. it's a big game, even if it's not. What, uh, it, what is this league doing? November 13th on Fox, Dallas Cowboys versus Packers. Um, yeah, I mean, like we care. I, I, I do understand why Eagles fans get a little, you know, up in the crawl, America's team and all that crap. Um, and the Packers are the same way, by the way. It's like, all right, we got to announce Dallas versus Green Bay. This is not a special game. This is not Christmas or Thanksgiving. This is November 13th, but it's Dallas versus Green Bay, so we have to make a big deal out of it. Um, well, yeah, it, ki get... it kind of is and it kind of isn't. It is because you're talking about two divisional winners – to multiple Super Bowl winners with a lot of history. Well, they're good. They're good teams. Yeah, they have great history. Right. But I understand fans when they get upset because the Cowboys and the Packers are treated differently than other teams. That's what I'm saying. Right. And I and I'm not saying that uh, that treatment is wrong. It was kind of earned over depending on whether you're looking narrow focus or you're looking wide focus. Are you looking wide focus? Packers against the Cowboys is a big game because they're two of the more prominent franchises in the history of the National Football League. And sorry, Eagle fans, both ahead of the Eagles at this time. Oh, yeah. You want to go? You want to go narrow focus though? What do those two teams have in common? Oh, they both got picked off in their first playoff game last year. Yeah, you did win a division, but you both got beat in your uh, first playoff game by the same team. As a matter of fact, right? 49ers. Beat the Cowboys yeah. and then yes. beat the Packers. Yes. So that hey, they got that in common. Can't beat the 49ers. <laughs> Let's match up the two teams and can't beat the 49ers. The Cowboys <laughs> against the uh Packers in week two. Now, you know what it's to the most significance to me out of the announcement for that, Johnny Mac? What is I'd it? I crossed two possibilities off my calendar. Because yes, I kind of look forward to Philadelphia versus Dallas every single year. We know it's gonna happen twice. And the most important thing this offseason is, please, <coughs> sorry, I'm getting all choked up about this. Please, please, please don't make it week 17. I think we're going to get lucky. I saw, I, and I haven't confirmed it, so I hesitate to say it, but I did see a week 17 supposed schedule that does not include the Eagles-Cowboys. Really? Yeah. Hopefully it's true. 
Okay. Hopefully it's true. So you're, you're not ready to go with this because you're not 100% confirmed? Not ready to go with it other than me. say it would be a, a potential commander level performance. If, uh, but I don't okay. know if it's true. Thank, thank you for not leaking that <laughs> one, John. We well, appreciate that greatly. The the leak is I don't know if it's true, so I'm not saying. But I did see a version that would not include uh, the Eagles and Cowboys in Week 17, which would be a good thing. All would, right would Would that game be north or south of the Mason Dixon? That game? I don't know. I don't okay. know. You don't don't know the exact location now. As long as it's not Eagles Cowboys Week 17, because it's really really screwed the schedule a couple of years now in the last three years where one of the teams goes, all right, JB's in. We're, we're pulling all the starters. We're not going to attempt to win this game. It's the reason why all offseason I've had to say, in my estimation, the Eagles were 9-7 and seven last year. Their official record was 9-8, and eight, but I only count them for 9-7 and because the last week of the season doesn't count for me. They didn't even try against the Cowboys. But we know they're not playing the Cowboys in uh, week 10 because the Cowboys are going to be playing the Packers. We know they're not going to be playing the Cowboys week 2 because the Eagles are going to be playing the Vikings. You're telling me it's not going to be week 17? All right, I don't even well, have to worry. I, I don't know. It's not going to be Thanksgiving either. We know that. Uh, those those leaked out. I forget who the Cowboys are playing on Thanksgiving, but it's not the Eagles. The, uh, the Thanksgiving game is leaked out? I didn't see that. Yeah, I believe they leaked out yesterday. I have to look during the break. I'll try to find that. All right, so, yeah, who are the Cowboys right. playing on Thanksgiving? Yeah, I'll try to find that All during right. the break. All right, we'll take a quickie timeout. Uh, coming back, Tommy Lawler from EaglesBlitz.com. Going to jump aboard. He's been call, uh, following and covering the Eagles for years. Does it on his own now on EagleBlitz.com. He joins us next here on Birds 365. <laughs> 